I'm Pete White. I'm Stephen Mowry. This is John Fish. I'm George Griffin. I'm Michael Davis. Hey, everybody. This is Island Fight CEO. Eat Fight Banaz Podcast. How's everyone doing today, tonight, whenever you're listening to this great podcast? Man, oh, man. Um, finally. The professor comes back home to the Fight Bananas podcast. Uh, we've missed him. He's been super busy. He's been training with Michael Beast Boy Davis. He's been getting everything done, handled backstage, and he's got some UFC Tampa stories. That's going to blow our minds. Uh, we're going to talk about the main event. We really haven't talked a lot about that Joanna Michelle Watterson fight, so we're definitely going to talk about that. Of course, we're going to talk about Mike Beast Boy Davis. John Radford, the professor, was in his corner. He's got multiple behind-the-scenes stories that uh, you're only going to hear it from here, from the Fight Ass podcast, and so much more. And I got a uh, a brain teaser for him. It's a huge, topical, big thing that, um, you know, hey, it can create controversy and conversate, and uh, it's a brain teaser. And the professor and I will definitely get into it. But before John comes on the show... I just want to thank a sponsor that's been with us since the beginning, and that's Warhammer Fightwear. Guys, check them out on Amazon or just head right to the site, warhammerfightwear.com. Tons of tees. They got tons of rash guards. They got the leggings for the ladies. It's the best. In MMA gear, if you need to get hooked up, go to warhammerfightwear.com. All right, guys, the professor joins the Bananas Podcast. All right, guys, the professor has jumped on the Fight Bananas line. We miss you so much, John. It's been literally one week. Saturday, last Saturday, Mike Beast Boy Davis, Tampa, Florida. You're in his corner uh, so much, man. I, I can't wait. John, how you doing, brother? Oh, I'm doing great, man. It was a, it was a fantastic weekend, bro. I was, uh, you know, I was honored to be in Mike's corner Um uh, again for the the second time, you know, in his in his UFC career, for as, as many times as he's fought, it's been great. The event was amazing as usual, um, and we got the the W in a, a highlight fashion. So I was uh, very happy for him. Hundred percent. And we can just start right there with Mike. And we got so many. I know you got so many stories. I've heard a couple. We want them all on this show, man. People are begging for that. All the stuff, all the gossip, the goose, and all that stuff. The parties <laughs> afterwards. Anthony Lionheart Smith. I want it all. But real quick, if we can stay with Mike, um, you mentioned something just right there that's just, and I talked to Mike about it, that walk-off knockout is part of the highlight reel now. And yes. he had so, he looked tremendous, the combinations, the precision, the power. You know, Mike looked awesome. And he had the fight won. But to get that knockout, to me, it just, it's a, it's, absolutely icing on the cake oh i mean a hundred percent i mean you know we've talked before i personally in my eyes thought the fight could have been stopped three times um in three different areas but the whole time it it's a fight no matter what and we've all seen crazy things happen in the octagon so to go out there keep keep doing work keep keep to the game plan keep you know um throwing the combinations landing the hard shots and getting the finish, you know, no matter how much time is left on the clock, any there was two seconds when Yara Rodriguez was about to lose a fight and he threw a crazy elbow and put out Korean Zombie to sleep, right? Anything can happen in MMA. So, to, like you said, to get that knockout with a, in the third round, to finish like that, it's just icing on the cake on a performance that got to showcase what Mike is so good at, and that's striking – transitioning and putting combos together and most of all hurting his opponent mm, that is very true um so this is why one thing i love about the show brother here we go you ready i'm just with this you said i'm what has been the best or maybe the top two or three that comes right to your head what's been the best ufc comebacks in the history like, you know what one comes to my head right now, and you're going to be like, Dave, are you serious? One is the Brock Lesnar Shane Carwin. Um, that- yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm just going to say you're serious. Like, are you serious? Because <laughs> you brought your boy's name into it again, and you somehow always drag him or or Jorge Masvidal. But Jorge Masvidal deserves you dragging him into every conversation, yes, right? Yes, sir, he does. What does the Brock Lesnar does not deserve that, sir? He doesn't. But in this situation, I can agree with you. It was kind of crazy. Oh, he, he was saved by the ref. He was you know, he, for not getting it stopped, and he came back and won. 
and that's Prof- a hell of a comeback. Professor, I got one. I actually got one. I just thought of it. I'm trying to think. I'm like going through my head, and for some reason, I'm like in title matches. And you're gonna love this, Chael Son and Anderson Silva. Remember? Oh, absolutely, hundred percent. Right? Like, oh, like I'm thinking 100%. about it. One of the greatest, one of the yes. greatest uh, comebacks in history. One of the greatest finishes in you know middleweight. UFC history as far as the title fight goes, for sure. Right. So, uh, you know, you and I, we agree 99% of the time. Um, I, I Mike was definitely, uh, they, they could have stopped the fight, but I'm okay. Like, I could think I'm on an island. Me and Thomas Gifford maybe are on the only ones on this island. Um, I think Mike was dominating the fight. Maybe some 10 8 rounds for sure. The first yeah. one and the. Uh... The third one was about to be a 10 8 round. Yeah, that's what I mean. I think the uh, second. Yeah, and then the second one was close to it because on the fence near the end and he was getting pummeled. You right. know what I mean? It was close, but I could see you giving that a 10 9 because there was a lot of times where Mike was getting, you know, touched with a jab here and there and moving around trying to keep his, you know, get his, you know, you know, slight rest in the, in the fight while he's still, you know, landing shots, you know, just being smart about it in a sense. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure, for sure. So, wow, uh, there's a couple of comebacks, but I, I, I got you. No, uh, Michael, uh, Michael Davis was dominating the fight. Major damage to Thomas Gilford. I'm really happy. I've been seeing a lot of the uh, videos. I've been seeing pictures. Even Thomas went on kind of Facebook and said, "Guys, I'm all right. Uh, no concussions. Yeah. Uh, nothing, nothing major. You know, he, he's he's beat up. He he feels it, and of course, he's upset or the that depression of a loss in the UFC. It's there, but I'm happy that his health is. He seems like in good shape that way." He has my utmost respect, right. and uh, you know, as far as that goes, as a fighter, as a man, I mean, that boy, that uh, uh, that man is tough as hell. I mean, one of the toughest dudes I've ever seen inside the octagon for sure, as far as just how he can just keep going. And he he is fine today. He looks perfectly like when I say looks, like he's speaking very coherently. He doesn't look like he's you know you know forgetting his thoughts or anything like that he looks banged up like a fighter would be but he's fine and i'm so happy to see that and i'm really happy about his outlook and what he said so i was glad to see that a lot because like you said you never want any residual damage you know because we've seen lately in boxing it's getting kind of gruesome out there you know when it comes to some of the punishment they're taking for too long and people aren't noticing it until too late you know what i mean Oh yeah, dude, absolutely. Um, another kind of cool thing, and this is, uh, awesome. This is very, I feel good for Thomas about it. Um, I'm excited about our Fight Bananas, you know, community and our listeners. The Thomas Gifford podcast, uh, probably released a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. It was around like five days before UFC Tampa. It is officially now the number two most downloaded podcast in our history. Uh, so Thomas Gifford, yes, thank sir. you, sir. Yeah, and man. Congratulations. Like, and it was it was hot off the off the press, but then after Mike's fight, it's like the build. It's a uh, one of the one of those old school movies like Mallrats. Like, it, you know, when it came out, it was okay, you know, yeah. whatever. But it just kept on building and building. And now it's like a cult classic. Thomas nice. Gifford is a cult classic for the fight bananas community. Well, it um, and I think I think they wouldn't have got. There wouldn't have been that much backlash if he, if like in his video, like what he's talking about, he he knew once once he made it out of the octagon, he's like, oh, I didn't make it to the to the judges. I think if he would have made it to the judges, we wouldn't have heard. He wouldn't have. There wouldn't have been this much backlash. Mm, okay, I I can feel. I, you. I, I don't think you. it. I think it would have been a if if he could have spoke to people back there and not got taken to the hospital or like right away. If you know what I mean, if he could have shown that he was you know, was able to speak and he was, you know, within his right mind of saying, no, that's why I wanted to continue because I know what I'm doing. It's not like I'm don't realize what I'm here. You know what I mean? I think it would have been a little bit different, but because of the way it ended and that, that, like you said, walk, you know, walk off knockout where he just, you know, face first on it. And it, it kind of makes it like a little bit, you know, uh, it raises the awareness level to it. Like, why did it have to come to that type of thing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas if, whereas if he would have mounted, you know, uh, a comeback in the last minute and made it to the judges, you know what I mean, for a second, people would have been like, oh, well, he had some fight left in him. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, you're right, brother. It's uh, it, it, 
what a crazy uh, war. What a crazy fight. Like you said, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, this might sound corny. I don't care. That's fine. It's the fight bananas community. If you don't like it, get the hell off the show. I don't care. But I'm a fan now of Thomas Gifford. He's made oh, me a I fan too. The 100%. next, the next time that man fights, they UFC. You have my sixty dollars if it's on pay per view. If it's on ESPN, I'm going to keep on continuing, giving you my nine ninety five a week or a month or whatever it is to continue to watch him. UFC, you have my money because Thomas Gifford, and you utmost definitely have my money because Mike Beast Boy Davis is a beast, a man, and I cannot wait till that man gets in that featherweight division. I cannot wait, Professor. Oh, I can't wait either. I, I'm looking for that, you know, eight week camp to see him, mm. see him get ready for a, a 145, and I'm ready for him to just really make his run at his rightful weight category. When Mike fights at 145 and he's fully ready, loaded, you know, with a good camp and everything like that, he's he really is a beast boy. He really is a beast, and he showed you what when he's in shape and when he, you know, what he can do when he's you know, it's not the first time in the Octagon fighting a top 10 fighter in the world. <laughs> nope. Two weight categories above you. This is a guy that's like, all right, I'm 155, and I'm fighting a guy that's 155, not a guy that's really a 170 or, or you know, that walks around at 185, 190. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so it, it shows you what he can do. And he darn sure got to, got to, you know, show you that he can put clean, clean powerful punches together in combos and he can move and he can wrestle and he can defend and he can and he has that brutalizing power you know what i mean so it's uh it's only the beginning and it's exciting to watch yeah you just can't teach it uh he just has power that's just uh you know he was born and god's like boom boom there you go ufc power um yep, oh, just, all right man hurts. you were there in tampa weigh-ins uh dinners uh, training that Saturday morning you were telling me about. If you want to tell that story to the audience, if not, I totally understand. But something like that, give 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 the people, give the fight bananas community some some juice, a cool story, a funny story. You in Tampa, hey Anthony Lionheart Smith, whatever story you want to throw out there, floor is yours, brother. I'm here. Oh man, well first of all, you know it's a, like not giving any secrets or anything like that away or telling anybody's business around, but it's great just to see fighters be 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 human beings right and just have fun i just love watching that like man because we always like growing up as a fan being in martial arts my whole life like i started realizing that there's there's a certain side to everybody but when you're just when when you don't have to have that 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 fight side to you and everything like that you, you, a lot of everybody's just chill they're just relaxed they're cool you know they you like a lot of the same things a lot of us like the cartoons or the um you know the comics or the you know the you know marvels or you just talk fights and it's just you know they're just relaxed and having a good time and they're just people and you know i think a lot of times you know us watching them on tv you know for a long time and everything like that you just you uh you kind of you forget that they're they have that side to them so it's cool just watching everybody uh um uh, intertwine you know they do you know some interviews here and there with some side stuff and they're just very personable they're very nice there's i've never had anyone you know not not say you know not talk to you for at least two seconds or whatever like that they may be busy or anything like that they're just it's a great community man and every time i go like the second time being there and everything like that i just appreciate it a little bit more every time everybody's you know for the most part is is super super nice if they want to be by themselves you can kind of tell and they kind of keep to themselves and know and everybody gets it you know what i mean if that's yeah. the type of person you are but if you're not you're, and you're, you're you're social then everybody's pretty much they're cool you know what i mean i don't see a lot of bad blood and like that and you're right like it's almost i don't want to say a party but kind of like that a lot of these fighters they train all year long they're in these camps and for some of them let's just throw it out like mike perry right he you know uh, dealt with the broken nose. He had to have surgery. He's already back in training. Shoot, he's talking about fighting Robbie Lawler. So when he's there for UFC Tampa, like he got, you know, it's cool. He's letting loose. He's almost a fan. You know, him and Mike train. Mike Beast Boy Davis train together. And it's you know an hour away from Orlando. It's just cool to go to a fight and kind of like in a way, Mike Perry's there being a fan because we 
all of us, man, and and people will oh, try to big Mike time Perry, it. Mike, if you ask Mike Perry, I think he thought he was he was he was cornering Mike that, that night. Behind us. <laughs> he was yelling, he was yelling out combos like we were. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I, I had to ask Mike after the fight. I was like, Mike, did you hear? Did you hear Perry yelling? He goes, No, I only heard you guys. I was like, Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was yelling. I think he yelled out like an eight punch combo one time. It was great. You know, he was supporting his boy, and it was awesome to have that support. But it was just, you know, it was also that's that's Mike, man. He's into it. He's 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 fighting the fight with Mike in there. You know, he's thinking it. You know, what, what what I throw? You know what I mean? So it was cool. But he was a. Uh, he was definitely a uh, you could I could hear him over our shoulder for a minute, so it was really funny. Oh man, that's dope. Uh, yeah, real quick, we just said it. What do you think about that Mike Perry, uh, Robbie Lawler match? I think you know they're definitely talking about. Uh, Perry had a great promo. It, it went viral that Saturday morning, I believe, or Saturday midday. Uh, sent it, uh, Santiago is out, so Robbie Lawler UFC 245 needs a dancing partner, and woo, that's a that's a dance I would pay for. Uh, that's a that's a fan favorite, you know. That's a fight that we love to watch. Um, so, if both cats want to go at it, I'm all for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm all for it. You can. I'm sure. I'm you, sure Robbie would 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 like to have a uh, the guy that's not going to wrestle him and put him up against a cage and, and throw some hands with him. So right, that's like a you know, BMF number one contender fight. <laughs> that's, if you want to call that the number two one, you know that's fine with me. Man, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Um, okay, so Saturday morning, uh, you guys had a great training session there in Tampa. How was that? Oh, dude, that's when um, you know, you know, you kind of feel a moment. Like I saw Mike, you know, because I got there, I had to teach, you know, until Friday, and then I, I headed down there Friday, um, checked out the weigh-ins, you know, online with everybody else, and um, you know, got down there as soon as I could. Then we went to dinner and stuff like that. And I'm, you know, I always, always, you know throw some jokes Mike way or try to try to make him smile and see what kind of mood he's in. And right away it was, it was different. And I just kind of felt it. And I was like, okay, we're here. All right. You know, I just felt good about it. It just felt, it, it just, just was a little bit, it was back to Mike being Mike as far as, you know, on, on fight week, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So it just felt good. So that, that night I, um, I was talking to him and, uh, you know, we set up sparring for Taylor to go, uh, spar, um, you know, the two time world champion. Um, I want to say it's, uh, I don't want to pronounce her name wrong, <laughs> but we'll just say we set her, we set her up to go over there for, for some good, really, really good, uh, boxing sparring and everything like that. So we were going to go and I told Mike, I was like, you're going to come in the morning with us. And he goes, uh, he's like, I don't know. I was like, I was like, I was like, well, I'll hold some pads for you and we can flow. And he goes, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I was like, let's do that. And I knew it because Mike gets up there and Mike likes to, Mike has a little bit of energy to burn in the morning. So he'll wake up and he'll, he'll want to do something. You know what I mean? And then today it just seemed like, it, it, it's like we already knew. I was like, I knew it, we, that he, he wants to do something. He's not going to, he has energy he needs to get out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we don't, we don't always hit pads and things like that, but it, just the feel of the whole thing i was like this is exactly what he needs so we hit some pads and then we, we moved a little bit and it was just bro it was it was tight it was tight it was a, a great flow and i just knew and i was like oh he's ready he's gonna this is gonna be a good show this is gonna be mike's gonna do mike's gonna do mike tonight wow yeah and i just and it, and it felt good and i just knew it and i was just like you know and it was one of those things where it's like this is perfect. This is I, this is exactly what we needed. We didn't go long. We didn't push nothing there. We got a good little sweat in. Nothing crazy and like, like that. It's like not like I'm trying to. We're not doing 30, 40 minutes, you know, of it. It was a good, nice, quick sweat, and then pretty much you're in a hot gym, so you just relax for the rest of the time. You know what I mean? So it was great. It was a. Uh, it was a. Uh, it was like I said. It was a. Uh, it was exactly what was needed. I think. And it got him completely. His flow was was wonderful, and then when you saw what he did in there. He was putting combos together, you know, left and right. Kicks were coming uh, coming off, and it was it was Mike being Mike. Man, that's awesome. Um, 
How about the the jog story? Uh, <laughs> oh my god, it's so embarrassing. Because <laughs> Mike talked oh about goodness. it and it was hilarious, but then when I yes. heard it from your side, it made it even more funny. It was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. So, hey, the fight right, bananas so uh, community loves funny stories. So hit him. <laughs> yeah. So Mike's Mike's twenty seven years old. Just turned it right. So we'll even say he's like a day into 27, you know, like a week into it. So he's really like 26. I mean, I know he's 27, but you know what I'm saying? It's like he's very, he's not even into his 27th year that you far. You absolutely make 100% sense on that, by the way. Uh, I'm right. with you. you know I'm with I mean? you. Okay. All right. You feel me? So, and I'm 38. I'm, I'm 37, about to be 38. So I'm on the tail end of my 37. So I'm damn near 10 years, you know, 10 and a half years older than this kid or whatever, nine and a half, whatever it is. And, um, and I have, you know, 3D surgeries. And not to mention, Mike is an elite athlete, and Mike's in shape. And I don't care that he just fought, you know, 15, like close to 15 minutes. <laughs> I was like, I don't care. He's an elite athlete, and I got 10 years on him. And uh, we sit there, and we look at each other, and we're like, okay, we're gonna run back to the hotel. We're gonna put a key. We're gonna put our. Uh, we're gonna put our um, stuff in the hotel, and then we're gonna either get on some scooters, or we're gonna run, or we're gonna grab an Uber. Whatever's quicker, we're gonna figure it out. And then we're like, okay. So then we talk Pete into coming with us because we're going back to the, the arena because we're like, we have we have tickets that we want to go use. And the way it works, you have to go through the like a normal person. You know what I'm saying? That's just the way it works. You have to go. So we dropped our stuff off um, because we couldn't take our stuff in there. You know what I mean? So we had to drop our stuff off and we go. In the meantime, we're running. Like <laughs> First of all, we start walking a little bit. And then I get a scooter and we start riding it or whatever like this. And then all of a sudden... Um, you know, we start jogging and everything like this and we're running to, um, we're running to, uh, to the, to the arena and all of a sudden I'm, I'm ahead of everybody cause I got a scooter for a second and then I put it, I, I stop it. I set it down and I was like, okay, nobody else can get one. So we're going and he goes and he starts running by me and I'm like, oh, now we're running. Okay. So I start taking off <laughs> and he just starts walking away from me. And I'm just like, oh, we're sprinting. No, he's not sprinting. I'm just, I can't, I can't keep up. This is not going to work right now. And then I see him videotaping, and I'm like, what? No, 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 no. This is. I, and I hear him like, this is what we do. After, and I hear, him, I was like, yes, but now it's showing how terribly and bad in shape I am right now. Thank you so much, Michael. And so we finally get there, and we start walking a little bit. And Pete's behind us, and Pete catches up, and we're all sitting there. So now I'm walking, you know, I'm running with Pete, and. We stop for a minute. And we start walking, and then we're like, "Okay, let's uh, let's pick it up again and start start jogging." And uh, so we start jogging, and uh, I thought me me and Pete were jogging at a pretty brisk, brisk pace. And then Mike sits there and goes, looks at us, and goes, "I just want you to know, guys, that this is truly my slow pace." <laughs> and I'm like, I was like, Pete, I go, this kid, this kid, I hate this kid. <laughs> and, <laughs> we're man. just running, and of course. What happens when we get to the arena? They shut the doors and it's it's the end of the admission session. No one's allowed in because or, or whatever because of a time limit or something like that. So we ran all the way there, and he he and he got an extra workout in after <laughs> after his 15 minutes of fighting. And we ran all the way there, and then we we uh we didn't get in, so we had to come all the way back. And luckily, on the way back, we made it all the way to back to the hotel and able to watch the co and the uh and the main man that's so funny too and the best part is you know uh mike like you said he put it on facebook and john you know we saw you in the background there was it's only now been seen by twenty three thousand one hundred and seventy four people so no one's seen it john no one even don't worry about it no, no, not at all, not at all, not at all. You know, after that performance, and people see it running. Oh, and then there's a guy that put it on there too. His name's, um, I think, I think he has something to do with uh, fight bananas and island fights, and he has a pretty good following too. So all of his people saw it. Oh my god! Because guys, I think D Tool put it on there. Yeah, so he it's did. all good. You know, it's all good. You know, DT Promotions. You know what I mean? Yeah, Dean yeah. Big Shot. Dude, it was, the- it was a great moment. It was just funny because I was like, oh, oh, that's what we're doing. Okay. All right, damn it! I wish I was warned. And it was crazy too. So, kind of, you mentioned his name, and man, I for one, you know, with me, Mike Davis, I've you know seen so many of his fights, and it's awesome to see his fights live. I love it. And of course, he takes the fight on four days' notice, and you know, 
I already had plans. I was in Columbus, Georgia that whole week for Island Fight 60. And one of the event that was, and it was just like, and it was so cool because I took this awesome picture. The arena is empty. It's a, you know, 12,000 beautiful new arena in Columbus, Georgia. And it's just empty. It, uh, they just finished it. They, they, they vacuum it, cleaned it. It's like three, four hours before game time, before the first punch, before blood is on the mat. <laughs> and and usually I don't, but I'm like I like I handed the phone to like one of the guys there with us. I was like, man, I want this picture, and I put my hands out. I was like, can't wait. And then Pete right underneath it, right away, I put the picture on Facebook. I'm, I swear he's like on it. It's like uh, he has notifications when I put something on there, and he's like, hey Dave, you're coming to Tampa, right? <laughs> I'm like, oh man, <laughs> trust me. I, you know, hey, it's uh, Mike Beast Boy Davis. We didn't know I, he was going to take a four day notice fight. It was uh, crazy, but we're so happy for him. And so, okay, where well, you saw the co-main and the main back at the hotel room, all these fighters are there. Let's talk about that because that's one thing I've had a couple. We just had a couple shows just drop. We've had bare knuckle uh, FC fighters on. We had, oh, you know, you wrote an article. Let, let me. Hmm. Since you, I'm glad you brought it. You wrote an article about the bare knuckle one with uh, Gustavo Trujillo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I held mitts for him this weekend. Oh, that's who you held, held mitts for. Yeah, man. He was a good okay. guy. It was fun. Okay, okay. I like this. Uh it was Robert Morrow who he's fighting. He was he jumped on the show. Uh Oh yeah, I held for uh, Gustavo Trulio. He was a uh, there you go. super nice, super good guy, super nice guy. Um I I believe he's Cuban. Light heavyweights. The the big boys. Man, he I thought he was a heavyweight. Wow. But it's yeah, dude, like He's going to cut I down. Do, I'm starting to realize that on TV, when you see these people Live, oh. like up close, you can't judge a damn thing from the TV. Amen, amen. You can't, I don't. Some of these dudes, like you're like, oh, that's a little guy. No, that dude's not little. Like what? Like I thought, I thought Bob, I thought Bob Ross was a short, was shorter than that. Oh. He's about damn near my height. Yeah, I think he's like six three, six two. Yeah, he's I think, there. Yeah, no, I think he is. I think he's actually my. Yeah, we're we're the same height. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, I did not know that. You say like that. I'm the the absolute worst with kids' ages. If a kid is four months old or nine, and they're a boy or a girl, I have no idea. I, I I have no idea. What grade is he in? Uh, fourth. He just turned pre. He's in preschool, Dave. I I I'm sorry. I have zero idea. Yeah, like I was like, I I, I just like wow. And then I'll see another one. I'm like, I thought you were bigger. Fuck! I can't judge any of this shit off the TV. <laughs> it's tough. I know, until you hold the mats and you and you uh, hear the pop pop or you feel that power, yeah, it's tough. But uh, yeah, so Joanna Jacek won the main event, uh, unanimous decision across the board. Uh, great performance, beautiful kicks, jabs, punches, combinations, just offensively gifted. It was a it was art. It was twenty five minutes of mixed martial arts at its highest point. John, you know, what did you think of that fight? Did you predict that? Uh, what's your two cents on the main event there? 100% honesty, I really thought it would go that way. I didn't. I thought, like, Michelle would have that one or one or two moments where she might have had a, had a second to be able to, to do something like she did when she got the back. I thought there might be one or two moments in the fight where she would she would have to make those moments capitalize. Other than that, Joanna's striking is just too much, and she builds it as it goes. And the more she gets, like it's like Anderson Silva back in the day. Like he'd start out slow, and as soon as he realized, oh, you can't touch me, and I know every I can time every little single thing about it. It's like watching Israel Adesanya fight with the guys. It just the volume gets more and more and more as it goes on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like Max Holloway again. It's like she's the version. She's a female version of Max Holloway, and then vice versa. Except Joanna is a little bit more technical of a kickboxer. I wouldn't say a little bit more technical. I'd say a lot more technical of a kickboxer. But it's the volume that I'm talking about. They put out a massive amount of volume, and it just gets more as the fight goes on. And it just, it's, it's crazy. I mean, and then she just. She just did it. And the more you pour it on, Michelle, those those kicks are only gonna keep keep Joanna away for so long. Yeah. And those hands are gonna come flying fast and furious. And 
the the rhythm that and you know once she starts timing those kicks if you don't hurt her it's just a matter of time before all that pressure is just going to get on her and if you try to wrestle her she her the takedown defense is, is so good and now she's learning how to offensively wrestle so that's 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 actually kind of scary oh man it's it was a brilliant performance and that's the first word I watched it live and I was like, yeah, you know, you and I both picked uh Yoana. I remember Chris Mixon, your protege, picked Michelle Watterson. The first war that I saw, like just it kept on popping in my head. I just kept on saying it was art. It was just, it was offensive. It was aggressive. It was art. It was just beautiful to watch. I'm an offensive guy. I like touchdowns. I like home runs. I like three point shots. And in mixed martial arts, I like offensively gifted athletes that throws punches in bunches. And uh, Joanna Jacek was just amazing. She was. It was. Uh, it. She gets the title shot. She will fight Zhang probably in the spring. Uh, the foot looked really, really bad. But you know, take some time off. Have the winner enjoy the holidays, and then you know, get that training camp back in, and then maybe that March or April. I think you're going to see uh, check versus Zhang. Yeah, I think so too. I think they'll end up make that fight happen. Um, you know, who else is in that in that division right now? Andra just lost, so and Rose Nomiuna just lost. And, you know, I don't even know if she's going to fight anymore. Yeah, that you said that to me a couple times now. I, I'm not too sure about the hair. Let me look up the straw weights real quick. Man, it is a it's a lean division. Um, yeah, Tantiana, she just had surgery. She was just on Ariel Hawani's show, just like Michael Beast Boy Davis, and she talked about that. So she's probably out for maybe even the rest of the year. Uh, you got Nina, uh, you know, Amanda Nunes' she girlfriend. Lost, uh, she just lost, and brother, she just, she's taking time off. She's going to try to have a baby. Um, so, so you know, yeah, I would say Yolanda Yo- Zhang is the next fight. Yeah, and you kind of have, it looks like uh, in that Washington show, you have Claudia versus Cynthia. So that's definitely a, you know, uh, number five versus number nine. So that's kind of on the back burner of who's really next or who's going to fight, you know, maybe Carla Espraza. So, wow. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's JJ Check. It's uh, from that performance, her name recognition, and I would love to see it. To me, it's the, I talked about it on FightBanass.com, it's the, it's the passing of the torch if uh, Zhang wins. Or it's like the redemption. Hey, we're, I'm not giving this uh, division up yet for JJ Check. It's one or the other. It's, it's, a, it's a big moment either way. Whoever wins that fight is, psh, you can even argue right away. Even I know you like, Dave, really? If Zhang defeats JJ Check and she's you know undefeated for the last seven years, I can debate she's the greatest uh, female straw weight of all time. Yeah, you can say that. Okay. Well, I did just say that. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm kind of thinking, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like... I could, I, could, I could take that. You know, Thug Rose and uh, Yuana, that would be the debate, but if they just fought straight up and Zhang beat her and, you know, uh, she would be 21-1. and one. That's a crazy fight. That's yeah. a crazy fight. That's just... That's that's all the marbles are on the table. It's uh, And I yeah, love it. Crazy. It's a... Old school, new school. I love that. Uh, you know, if in a way, like it was the style bender and Silva, but if Silva still had, you know, maybe of a year or, or two years ago when he still had a little juice left in it, but it was still great. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, if you don't have, if you do have any more UFC Tampa stories, we'd love them. If not, I do have that brain teaser. I have that just funny thing. I'm driving in the car, man. You know me, I do a lot of driving. I'm like, oh, this is a great conversation I want to have with John. I'm like, wait, oh, I'm saving this for the podcast. This is even too good just to kind of like conversate about it. I'm like, oh, this is just going to be, hey, it, I, it could be a minute of the show or it can be an hour. I don't know. <laughs> it's going to okay. see where it goes. All right, let's do it. You do it? You ready? Yeah. All right. So I remember growing up in high school buying the Madden football game. It's... Uh, Ray Lewis was on the cover. That was maybe my favorite, or the Michael Vick one. It was just you know every you left school early, you kissed a girlfriend on the cheek, and you went Michael home. Michael Vick was unfair Madden. in that year. In that year, oh, he had that game. Unbelievable, right? The it was yeah. uh, hike and just run left. 
<laughs> that's all you had to do. He was like a 99 speed or something like that as yeah. a quarterback. It was like, what? Yeah, it was in crazy. It was crazy. It was awesome. So, but, so Madden and, you know, all, now that was high school for me was 16 years ago. It's still one of the most popular games in the world. Everyone, everyone plays Madden. My kids were asking me about, hey, you know, can I get Madden for Christmas? All that stuff. I'm like, son, go over there and do the dishes. Anyways, my point, John Madden was for, for one, first an NFL coach, a Super Bowl champion NFL coach. Then he became the greatest, probably sports football announcer of all time. So this is his third career of this Madden game that, but like, Kids and people, you know, millennials, that's all they know. John Madden, that, that's it. It's a, he's a, oh, the video game, right? My, yes, they, that, that, yeah, they, they pretty much only know him as the video game, yes. My question to you, my point to you is, are my kids going to say, man, that BJ Penn, that's a great website? <laughs> 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 that's great how amazing oh my god i was so wondering where you were going with this i was like where is this gonna is i teed that up good this? right i definitely teed that up right yeah, that was good oh yes they will isn't this crazy because um you know stuff just broke uh it was a great story I and mean, i think it was maybe the lawler uh mike perry or it was another story and you know i go on facebook and it says oh reported by bjpen.com i'm like oh cool but i'm like Wait, like the last four things, uh, you know, other than him getting beat up in a in a Hawaii bar. You're, you're okay. So, anyone in middle school, right? To yeah, my to kids. elementary school yes. that's in this will will pretty much sit there and, and they're only remember. They'll be like BJ Penn. I think he used to fight, but it's a good website. Yeah, like it breaks news. There's there's you know a ton of it could, content on it. It could very it could very well happen that way. Isn't this crazy? Like, I'm just like, wow. Like, John Madden was one of the greatest coaches, one of the greatest announcers of all time. And BJ Penn, especially with how it ended, uh, the seven fight, uh, losing streak, the fights, uh, on TMZ and the brawl, like, he didn't have, like, a GSP coming back, redemption five years, winning the middleweight championship in Madison Square Garden for the first time ever UFC and MSG. Like, it's, humongous you know what i mean like bj penn left in a really really bad light but the website's awesome yeah so yeah that's what i'm saying it's like it's it, that's what's gonna take over man that, that that's exactly what they're gonna remember and you know you know what's up here, just a little on the along the same lines do you know i'll, I'll hear kids like at, the, at my school, throw in a football and they'll jump up and they'll, they'll catch it over somebody and be like, Oh, I mossed you. I mossed you. Right. Yeah. Oh, Remember yeah. When we used to say that. And that's, that's from Randy Moss, right? That's oh. from what Moss used to do in his career in the NFL. That was just so amazing. He was like, he was just so gifted at it. He could jump up over everybody and catch the ball at the peak of the ball and it'd be over like four people. And the second best be wide receiver just, of all time. It, it's just an, unbelievable, right? Yep. Unbelievable. I'll ask those kids, it's like, Hey, 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 you know why they call it that? And they're like, call call what, what? I was like, why they call it, you know, you just got mossed or I mossed you. And they're like, no. And I'm like, you really don't know why they call it that? And they're like, no, I just, that's, I just thought that's what it was called. I was like, you ever heard of Randy Moss? Oh my goodness. And they're like, and they're like eh. yeah. I was like, kind of, I go, it's from him. <laughs> and I'm like, how are you knowing? How do you not know what this is? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! No, no. That, Am I this old, or is it this sad? Which one is it? Maybe a little bit of both. Oh. That, that's so funny. You said it. I have the same analogy. I, uh, I'm wrestling with my two boys at at home. We have this, you know, this back room. It's like a, a TV and just a playroom with all the balls and stuff with the kids, Legos, all that stuff. And we're wrestling. Uh, it was actually two on one, the two boys against me. I was holding my own. Trust me. I was holding my own. Anyways, I, I'm fighting one in the front and I'm like punching. We're going back and forth. I'm using my jab. You know, I've been to P white boxing and MMA in Port Orange, Florida. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely flossing the jab just right. But then out of nowhere, 
my oldest son of seven now, getting pretty uh, muscular, by the way, because he does go to PY Boxing and MMA in Port Orange, Florida. He comes with this running knee. And he comes, and I swear, he puts it in the back solar plex of my back rib area. Holy crap. Like, I felt like I lost my breath, you know, like when you lose your – I'm like, whoa. And I look at him. I'm like, ah. Oh. I'm like yelling, and my wife comes in, and she's like, you all right? I'm like, uh, he masvidal me. He masvidal me, darling. <laughs> I'm like, that's the knee. That's what I say when I get hit with the knee. I, it's a masvidal. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So, Good job, Colin. Good job. I know, man. That kid's getting it. I'm telling you, he's he's looking lean, mean. It's a uh, uh, style bender. Watch out, 2034. Colin Van Ock and the Conquerors coming hit your way. <laughs> <laughs> My man, uh, I loved it. I I laughed around nine times. I learned a lesson, and we uh, highly praise Michael Beast Boy Davis. So I think it was probably the third best episode we've ever done. Absolutely, always. Man, you got anything else more off your chest? Any kind of things you want to talk about? Big week next week. We got tons of content coming out everywhere every day. Uh, John, make sure, you know, tell the world also to subscribe to the Fight Bananas YouTube channel. Uh, Subscriptions are up. It's, you know how much I'm going to charge now? We're charging nothing. It's absolutely free. Uh, the Q&As, you can always come into Fight Bananas Official on Instagram and just slide in. Slide in. We've always got questions. we got two or three, four. But I like when we get 10 or 12 in there, and then we just, boom, bang them out. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. We love getting those questions. And then, um, you know, we have a, a couple in-studio guests this weekend, so that's going to be fun. Or not this weekend. I'm sorry, this Thursday. So that's going to be fun. Absolutely, man. Uh, so make sure everybody checks that out. And then, uh, absolutely, like I said, uh, check out the uh, YouTube, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's where everything's at. And always visit, uh, the original home of fightbananas.com. Also, fightbananas.com. And two shows I just want to give a little bit of shine to right now. Both of them on November 9th. First and foremost, close and dear to our hearts. We're talking about that Port Orange Pal boxing here in Port Orange, Florida. Uh, any kind of information, I think you can, uh, it maybe on Pete White's uh, social media platform, go there. I don't even know if Port Orange Pal has a website yet, but definitely on Facebook, I know they got a lot of information out there. They got the banner and all that stuff, so a lot of good stuff's happening there. I know they're going to do some like sweepstakes. They're going to give out some great stuff. I know one prize is going to blow people's minds. And then secondly, on November 9th, Island Fight 61 in Orange Beach, Alabama. Three fights have been announced. Uh, I secretly know the main event, and it's going to blow people's minds. It's on UFC Fight Pass. The main event is literally going to be bananas, and it's uh, it's pretty cool. Two major shows on November 9th. Absolutely. And that, um, those uh, three fights announced right now are, are absolutely awesome. I like those right now. I'm excited about those. Yeah, all three. Like uh, all three are going to be barn burners. It's like when you can put three fights on the card already, and you're just like, "Oh, that's you got me. You got me hooked." And then you give us the main event, and then you just kind of, you know, maybe put a heavyweight in there. You put a female fight in there. You put like a bantamweight fight in there. It's just the card stacked. I'm, you know, I I hate talking good about the guy, but that Dean Tool man, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Professor, man, it was a great show. Uh, like I said, follow my main man, John, on Instagram, guys. John underscore NOS Nas. I still haven't heard this story. Maybe one day you're going to tell me, but John underscore Nas. All right, man. You guys have a great one. Thank you for, uh, again, doing it, doing it with your brother. It's always fun. It's always a pleasure. And I will see you Thursday in the studio, sir. Yes, yes sir. Let's go bananas, my man. All right, brother. Have All a right. good one. You too. Bye.